Any you two carpenters? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> hey, Amen. All right, Psalm 133 and verse 1. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning, Lord God, and we thank you, Father, in advance for speaking to our heart, Lord God. We pray that you would transform minds, that you would renew minds, Lord God, that you would give us clean hearts, that you would purify us, Lord God, of, of anything that is not of you, Lord God. Make our hearts um, soil, Lord God, good soil that can be planted in, Father. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and this heart to receive, Father. We thank you, God, for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name, we all say amen. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. Go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. If you have it, say amen. amen. Yes, all right. I know many of you know this probably by heart. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And appeared unto them cloven tongues as a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I read that scripture this morning that today's message is, is one accord. One accord. Today is Pentecost Sunday. Amen. You all know what that is? Yes? No? Maybe so. Many of you, of course, you do. Today is Pentecost Sunday, and, 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 and many of us have, have had so many sermons, and we've read the, the book of Acts, and we've read, read uh, chapter 2, and we saw that when, that when Jesus walked 50 days after, uh, 40 days after his resurrection, and then he sent the disciples to Jerusalem to wait there, wait for the promise. And we've heard, this, we've heard this story, we've heard this scripture, we've read this scripture, and many times we, we, we put all the emphasis, and, 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 and rightfully so, on the power of God falling and waiting on the power of God. But uh, this morning, the Lord wanted me to um, put more emphasis on one accord. And I believe that, that there are so many people that think that they're in one accord. In reality, they're just in the vicinity. They're just in, in the vicinity. They may be in the church, but they're not in one accord. They may be in the church. They may be on the front pew. They may be on the back pew, but in reality, they're truly not in one accord. And this morning, the Lord is calling me to draw you and to call you to be in one accord. See, the power can fall. And if it falls and you're not in one accord, you're going to miss it. Have you ever been to a service and got nothing out of it? Have you ever been in a service and been so caught up in your own thing, in your own way, in your own, in your own failures, or how you don't like that person? And you miss it. You, you, you wanted to get in worship, but you just couldn't shake nothing. And before you know it, the songs have been played, and you didn't get where you wanted to get. The altar call comes and goes, and you wanted to get there, but for some reason you didn't move. And how many know that you can be in the vicinity, but be, not be in one accord? Amen. You can be in a relationship, live in the same house, be in the same room, sleep right next to each other and not be in agreement, not be in one accord, not be in singleness of mind. And I believe that I was asking the Lord this week what to bring on this Sunday and I went to a trip uh, a pastor's conference in Indiana and not India. <laughs> My brother asked me, did you go to India? I was like, no. I didn't. No, I didn't. Indiana. And it blessed me. It blessed me. But as, I, as, as usual, the Lord said, I want you to look and see. 
Look and see uh, what they do well. Look and see what, 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 what you can glean. Look and see what, uh, and, and listen to what I'm saying. He goes, and then, and then I'm going to tell you to come back and, 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 and there's some things that you need to implement. And he says, one of the things that are weighing on me is the body being in one accord. See, how many know, you, you can gather as a church, but if there's so much division in the church and so much split and clicks here and clicks there and, and all these people thinking different things, it grieves the Holy Spirit. What He wants to do in the body and what He wants to do in the city is hindered by us. And I know that this may be a hard word because it, it causes you to look in the reflection of the mirror and say, I, I need to work on that guy. I need to work, work on that lady because I, I want to say, you know, as usual, you preach a message. You're like, ooh, I know that sister needs it. I know that brother needs it. Right? Liz, are you listening? You know, look, a, don't look at your husband and say, mm, mm, you know. It happens all the time. I see the faces from here. They're like, like, I'm not trying to cause fights. I promise you, I'm not trying to cause strife. I want you to say, it's me, O oh Lord. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, O oh Lord, that needs to check to see if I'm in one accord. Because you can be religious. You can be churchy. You can dress right and look right and stay in the Word and pray and still not be full of the Spirit of God. Still not be in tune with the Spirit. Still be out of alignment. And God's calling you to alignment this morning. God's calling you not just to align with Him. Every, some of us get selfish. All I need is me and my Jesus. Right? And that might be true at some times. But He created the body of Christ. You can't just be a finger by yourself. A finger detached from the body will eventually die. Any part of the body, whatever part you are. Well, I'm not the finger, I'm the nose. Okay, well, cut that off. Right? When you act like that and when that's your at attitude, you are a leprous piece of flesh falling off the body. That's what happens when you're not in one accord. All I need is me and my Jesus and everybody else can go fly a kite. Right? But, but God created us. You know, Jesus sent the disciples two by two. He didn't send them alone. See what you can do. Go. You got this. You've got the promise, you've got the anointing, but, but there was something about being in accord. There was something about bringing together people in one place. These people, there was 120 people waiting in an upper room on the day of Pentecost. 120 people, I want, I want you to consider 120, there's maybe 50, 60 in here right now, 120 people just waiting together for 10 days, together. Um, have you ever gone on a vacation <laughs> with a couple of people together? Like at first, you know, y'all got the same mission. Everybody's happy and putting luggage in the car and woohoo, we're going, right? And then you get on the road and a little bit of time passes and, you know, things start happening. Maybe you're with a family, maybe you're with a group, maybe it's just you and your spouse, but many times a little time passes and frustration happens and strife begins. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Now, now, what you think, that's just you and your family or you and your spouse. Now, 120 people waiting for 10 days. 120 just waiting and waiting and waiting. Now, the, the, the amazing thing to me is, is the Lord, He records everything, right? And, and it, it, it's amazing to me that right here, right in this waiting period, that there's not recorded and amongst the 120, there was some dissension. There was some strife. There was some frustration. Sister so-and-so slapped sister so-and-so. I don't read that. You know? Brother so-and-so and brother so-and-so went at it. They got, they went, you know, they were arguing. And people, you know, were looking at, you know, sister don't even wash her hair no more. You know, whatever. I, don't, I don't know where that came from. If you didn't wash your hair this morning, I'm sorry. 
Praise the Lord. But I, that's not recorded in the Word of God. It's not recorded in there. You can't see that, that, there's, that there's dissension and, and, and there's, there's... Why? The, the Bible doesn't record any issues, any problems, any fighting, any gossip, any strife, any jealousy, any envy, any offense, any competition. It's funny that there's, there's, I've seen smaller churches than 120 people and everything that I just mentioned, envy, strife, jealousy, division, all that is still in the body. On one given one day, just one day out of the week, can you imagine 10 days in a row? You ever go on a church retreat? Anybody get on your nerves? Don't admit it. Don't raise your hand. But you all know what I'm talking about. Right? Maybe it was the pastor. It happens. But none of that is mentioned. And, and, and it's amazing to me that I look at the Word of God and I don't see any of these things. And I'm asking the Lord, why? Why don't I see this stuff? Because this is, you know, these are human people. The, the Spirit of God has not failed yet. So you can't say, well, they were so full of the Spirit that, you know. No. The Holy Ghost hadn't fell on them yet. So they were all in one place. And in one accord, then there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. Verse 1 says, they were all with one accord in one place. Then. Somebody say then. then. See, what, why, why was it that, 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 they were, that there was no fighting, that there was no issue, that there was no strife, that there was no gossip, there was no uh, jealousy or envy or competition or frustration? I believe because they were in one accord in one place. And I'm like, well, I mean, that, okay, yay, that's not that very deep. I don't think you understand me. They were so caught up with one mind and one purpose, waiting and waiting and waiting, and their sole purpose of waiting, their sole focus is waiting on the promise. They were waiting so much and so intently on the promise that nothing else mattered. What does it mean to be in one accord? The definition means one mind, one passion, unanimously. Now I want you to think about that second. Y'all ever seen a, a boxing fight and you got four judges on every side. And this judge judged it this way and this judge. And you know, split decision. But no, all of a sudden it's either a split decision or a unanimous decision. And unanimous means every single person is with the same mind and the same agreement in one accord. Now I want you to think of the body of Christ. Does it sound like the body of Christ to be in unanimous, one focus, one accord? See, the reason why I believe the Lord said bring up one accord this morning, he goes, the people think that they know what one accord means, but in the actuality, they've never really said, Lord, I want to be in one accord with the entire body. I want to stand right here and be in tune with you and the true body of Christ be in tune with all of them because I know that I know that I know that there's power. Power falls when we're in one accord. Anointing falls when we're in one accord. Fire falls like on the day of Pentecost when we're in one accord. Yes, you need to get in your secret place, but that's relational. When you need fire to fall, when you need power to fall, there are principles in the Word of God that say you need to get in unity. You need to get in accord. You need to stand in agreement. You need to declare and agree upon a thing together. That's what the Word of God says. See, when you're in one accord, truly, there's no division. There's no distraction. There's no offense. There's no jealousy. I don't, I don't got time. You remember that, that meme? I, ain't nobody got time for that. Y'all remember that? No. Nobody got time for that. When, when, when that. See, you can have a mess going on in the peripheral, you know. All this stuff going on here. You're focused on Jesus. You're focused on the kingdom. You're focused on purpose. You're focused on the will of God. And all that. You could be right in your face. And still, it doesn't take away from your focus. Still, it won't, it won't steal your focus. It won't steal your passion. It won't steal your, your joy. Why? Because you're in one accord. Because you're not going to let anything steal. Amen. Steal from that. A mess could be happening all around you, your peripheral, in your front of your face. 
but your mind and your passion is so focused on Jesus, so focused on the promise, so focused on purpose, so focused on commission, that you will let nothing deter you. And I know that doesn't seem like a miracle, but if anybody has ever been with a group of people for any amount of time, that's kind of a miracle for, 10 t for 120 people for 10 days to have no issues. Right? But God is calling you and me to, to examine ourselves and say, are you truly in one accord or are you just in the vicinity? Because there's a lot of people, I'm sure, they were in Jerusalem, there was a lot of people around them. There was many people close to them. But the fire fell on only a select few that were in one mind and one accord. Is that where you're at this morning? When it comes to the body, when it comes to activate church, when it comes to the vision of this church, are you in one accord or do you want to do your own thing? Are you in one accord or do you, are you always looking to, to be seen or, or, or to shine yourself? See, the, one, the thing about being in one accord is it's intentional. See, the body has to work together to do anything. So when you're in one accord, if the finger tries to lift 500 pounds or, uh, you know, the, the, I know some of y'all go to the gym all the time, and you go bench press 400 pounds. Well, you try to do that without your hands, you just do it on wrist, and it's going to be a little bit hard. You need the body. You can push more, you can, you can lift more, you can carry more burden, you can accomplish more if you, if, if you engage your entire body. I don't want to get into working. I know I don't look like it. I know how to work out, but I do. I do. But a lot of times it, you can't do specific things because your core is weak. Your core is weak. So you could have big old guns, and if your core is weak, you're like, and you'd snap. Right? It just don't work. How's your core this morning? How's your foundation this morning? Do you have, see, one accord means there's one, one mind, one vision, not two. Right? So l let me say this. Um, the Lord is creating uh, ministries in, in this house because he's preparing for revival. Let me say that again. The Lord is creating and having me create ministries in this house because we're repair, re preparing for revival. There's going to be an influx of people that come in this house that need to be ministered to. And some people are not going to want to serve on the worship team because I'm not, I, I'm, I don't get the part. I don't get the main, what do you call it, the main singer? The lead. Thank you. Sister mouthed it to me over there. I don't get the lead, so I don't want to participate. You're not in one accord. I don't get to play my favorite instrument, so I'm not going to participate. I'm not in one accord. I don't get to do the music along Sister, so Sister Margaret. Or, or, you know, play with the soundboard and mess with the pastor's mic all service long. I'm, i got to blame it on somebody. Hallelujah. I don't... And some people be like... I don't, I don't care. What do you want me to do? You want me to sweep? You want me to clean? You want me to wipe down? What do you want me to do? You want me to serve? You want me to greet? You want me to go out in the parking lot where everybody's sweating and all and my stuff is running? Right? All that shh that you did for an hour is just dripping. <laughs> right? Nobody. See, there's some people that really don't care. I don't care. I just want to serve. I just want to be in one accord with the body. There are some, One of the things that I witnessed in, 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 in Indiana was... An, a, 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 a spirit of, 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 of being a servant with excellence. There were pastors that pastor over thousands out there in the parking lot. Let me help you park your car. What do you need? How can I serve? How can I serve? How can I serve? One of the things that they did over there that I haven't seen in a long time. Ooh, and if we implement it here, I just need you to wash your feet. Is they did a, they did a foot washing. Right? We're going to put some soap, some bleach, some Dawn in there. Right? Glove up. You know. It takes humility to get on your knees and serve. 
It takes humility. See, when you got pride, you got an issue with that. I don't want to wash nobody's feet. You know how nasty that? It, it's gross. I'm not going to show you mine. I try to keep my socks on, my shoes on, because I, right, I don't, you, looks like I got talons. You, you don't, imagine watching, washing those, you may get scratched, I'm just saying. <laughs> but it takes humility. It takes having a, an attitude, a, having a, a service type attitude. It's about submission. How can I, how can I serve you, brother? What can I do for you? I'm going to get some shirts made that says you, you before me. Just you be for me. And put, how can I serve you? Because that's what it's about. Jesus came as a servant. He made himself of no reputation. And everybody, no, I'm going to say everybody. A lot of people in the body, they want a title. They want a position. They want recognition. And God said, don't worry about that. Just get in one accord and see what this entire body can accomplish in one accord instead of you being in the limelight. I know that you're talented. I know you can sing. I know you can play. I know you can serve. I know you can preach. I know you can teach. I know you got gifts. But wait upon the Lord and just, 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 just get into one accord and watch what He can do through a body. You know the scripture... Is, is clear if you, if you think about it now being in one accord and you look through Genesis all the way through Revelation and the power that happened and the things that happened when they were in one accord when they had one a group of people with the same body with the same mind with the same passion with the same heart the things that they could accomplish even even the ones that didn't have pure motives the ones that built the Tower of Babel the Lord said they've come into agreement they're in one accord. And anything that they want to do, it shall not be withheld from them. They can accomplish anything because they're in one accord. It's a principle that the Lord put into effect. That if we can get into one accord in here, in this church. See, one of the things, church, and I'm way off my notes, but I'm just going to let the Lord move. One of the, one of the words that I got from this trip was a correction from the Lord. And I'm going to be transparent with you. When I first started this church, my, my, what I asked for, I believe, was greater than what I was looking for now. And a word came that said, ask me for the nations and I'll give it to you. And, he, and the man was just preaching. But I heard the Lord say, why, why aren't you asking me anymore? Why aren't you asking me for the nations anymore? I didn't call you to do it by yourself. I know that you may, may be tired at some times. I know that you, 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 you may be exhausted sometimes and you may be overwhelmed. But, but if you'll get in tune with the body, ask me for the nations and I'll give it to you. If you get in tune with brother, sister, and so-and-so, and, -so and, and all these people, and they all get in one accord, what you can accomplish together in one accord can far outdo what you can do by yourself, no matter how much you love me, no matter how passionate it is. You need the body. He said, ask me for the nations. You're only asking me for Odessa. You're only asking me at times for Texas. And sometimes when you get real, real bold, you'll ask me for the United States, but you won't ask me for the nations. And I said, if you'll ask me for the nations, I'll give it to you. I'll give you the heathen for your inheritance. I want to be blessed, church. I want to be blessed. I want to magnify him. you got to get to a place, church, that no matter what mess is happening around you, that you don't allow anything to, to rip you off, to separate you from the vision. We're, we're supposed to be winning souls, amen? We're supposed to be in the Word of God. We're supposed to be seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. All these things, then all these other things will be added unto us. But in reality, we know and if we want to admit that nine times out of ten, we are seeking the other things first and waiting for the Lord and putting Him on the back burner. That's not being in one accord. 
When it comes to Wednesday night prayer, this place is mainly empty. We're not in one accord. The, the Word of God said, and this is a command, forsake not, don't do this, forsake not the assembling of ourselves no matter what some do. Especially in the end times, I'm paraphrasing. And I know that you have jobs and you have other things to do, but sometimes when the Lord says, you, you, you have to ask the Lord, Lord, am I supposed to be there? I mean, He already says it in His Word, but, but there are times where He has designated for you to be here because He has a breakthrough for you. He needs you involved in that prayer so that we, He can bring down the presence, the fire of God can fall, and some transformation can happen. God is calling you. You think that you not showing up doesn't matter, but the devil is a liar. I'm here to tell you, you are needed. You are valuable. One to send a thousand to flight, church, and two will send 10,000. Can you come up here, brother? Come up here, brother. Okay, so you're rejected for a second. <laughs> oh, turn around, brother. All right. So me and this brother here, this brother can send a thousand to flight, probably about 1,500 because he's pretty strong. <laughs> right? But when I join him, we send 10,000. Right? But Brother Orlando, don't mind, he don't feel like coming to prayer that day. Wrong. I need him. Okay, you're not rejected no more, brother. Come on. <laughs> right? Now, somebody do the math. Any, we got any decathlon people in here? Ca calculator? 100,000? Yeah, the mobile scale, 100,000? These three. One to send 1,000. Two will send 10,000. Three will send. Come on, church. Come on. If, if only four people show up on, on, on. Okay, thank you. Uh, if only four people show up on prayer night, that, you know, that's okay. We sent a whole lot to flight. We, we made a lot of victory. But what would happen? If everybody came in one accord and sat in this place and sought the Lord and sought His face and sought revival and sought a shaking, a fresh fire, a fresh anointing, all in one place in one accord, what would happen then? Amen. Church, I'm challenging you this morning. I'm challenging you to shake yourself, to stir up the gift that is within you, to not let comfort or complacency or, 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 or the enemy telling you that, oh, you don't matter if you show up or not, you're not going to make a difference. The devil is a liar. You make a difference. Your presence will send another 100,000 to flight, church. But the enemy wants you to think, ah, it's of little effect. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar, church. You get to, gotta get to a place, church, where, where you, gotta, you gotta get to a place where you say, I won't let you go, Lord, until you bless me. I won't let you go. I'm, 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 in so, I'm, I'm so much in, in accord that I'm not gonna let you go. It doesn't matter what I see. It doesn't matter that, that somebody's being ugly to me, even in the body. It doesn't matter, Lord, that, that I'm no longer in the position that I was in. I'm not going to get offended because I wasn't here for the position. I'm here for you. It doesn't matter that I'm not recognized, that I'm not considered a leader no more, or I get sat down, or whatever the case may be, church. It's not about that. It's about being in tune with Him in one accord. See, a lot of times you don't see your value. Amen? Or you don't see that you're going to be valuable in a certain area. Okay? Let me, let me talk about that for a second. Seeing your own value. When they were all in one place in one accord, and then suddenly there came a sound from the rushing mighty wind and fire filled the house, and it fell upon each of them, a pure cloven tongues as a fire. If I had cloven tongues on my, a fire on my head, I can't see it. I can't see that I've got that. Brother so and so across from me can see it. See, a lot of times you don't see your value. I'd be like, but I want to preach. I understand that you want to preach, but right now I need you to serve as a greeter. You don't understand your value. You don't see the fire that I see. The Lord's showing me a fire on your head in this position right now, and He wants to use you. 
That word that you say good morning to somebody and the face that you smile that you put on that day, it, it just made somebody's world. It just broke some kind of chain off of somebody that, that said nobody cares about me, nobody ever greets me, and all of a sudden you're the greeter in the house and you gave somebody a hug and you don't know why. Church, you don't know your value and what position God put you in, but you've got to stay in one accord. You've got to stay with the, the same heart of God and not worry about who's the finger, who's the eye, who's the mouth, who's the tongue. But instead say, Lord, however you want me to serve, I'll serve. I just want to be in accord with the body. See, when you're in that kind of accord, when you're in that kind of agreement, when you're in that kind of unity, it doesn't matter who's getting the credit. It doesn't matter what's going on in the body as long as we are advancing the kingdom. Is, does, is that your heart's cry? Is that your desire? To advance the kingdom, to win souls? Are you out there witnessing? I know I hear testimonies of brothers the other day, all day. You know what happened today? I was doing this. And I prayed for this person, I prayed for this person, and that person got healed, and this person, got, and I met somebody in Walmart, and we just started praying again. I hear it all the time. Imagine if every single one of us were like that. If every single one of us had such a heart for God, and a heart for souls, and a heart for revival, that we were constantly out there. And the things, and even the ones that are doing that real, real well. What about in those times that you're in your own mess? Caught up in your own stuff. What if you could shake that because your focus and, and your unity of one mind and one body focused on the Lord was so intense that nothing could shake you? Amen. That you could see the enemy at work over here and it doesn't offend you, it doesn't knock you off of your alignment. There's power in unity, church. There's power in the body. There's power in the body of Christ. Don't try to do it by yourself. Let me say that again. Don't try to do it by yourself. They were all in one accord. God is looking for people that will not lose their, their unity because of selfish issues or self-focus. A people whose desire for Him is greater than any other thing. Not a person specifically, but he's also looking for a people. He's coming back for a bride, not one specific person, but the bride of Christ is a group without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. Have not allowed themselves to get tainted up by their selfish issues. God designed us to be in one accord, church. A people who choose, let me say that, a people who choose to be in one accord with one mind, with one purpose, one desire, and put self aside and gather together. Amen? Gather together as the body of Christ. Gather together as the church. God designed it to be together in one accord. Let me give you some examples. The Lord's Prayer. He said, they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. And he says, our Father. He's teaching individuals how to pray. He's teaching a group of people, but he said, our Father. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Our. Forgive us our trespass. It's all about a group. You're including others in that. There's, there's power in unity. So even when he taught you how to pray, it didn't have to be with you and you alone. There are other portions of Scripture that say you've got to get in the secret place. But, that, but when he taught them how to pray, he says you need to, you need to gather in unity, in, in, in accord, together, and seek the Lord. And again, I already mentioned this, but, but so there is power in being in one accord. And, and, I, and I demonstrated that with brothers here. There's power. More power. A th one will send a thousand. Two will send th ten thousand. So the, the principle there is the more there are of us in one mind and one accord, the more we send to flight. Amen? There is power when we get together. How, how many know that the enemy is constantly trying to cause division in the, in the body? Constantly trying to cause division in the church. Let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me go deeper into it. Constantly trying to cause division in your house. If he can separate the, the husband and wife, if he can separate the brother and sister, the mother and daughter, if he can put some kind of separation and some kind of division, 
then he can, he can divide and conquer. But as long as you're in one mind and one accord, the enemy can't. He's got no, no foothold. There's no space. Amen. If somebody comes in here and tries to hurt any one of us, I really feel sorry for them, especially this group of people. Right? Right? I got karate men. Everybody in here has a gun. Got sisters over there that are bodybuilders and brothers. Body, all, it's, it's gonna, it's, somebody's going to be in some pain. Right? And be like, oh, you messed up. Wrong church. Right? But we're all going to have one purpose to defend the body. Right? But what, what happens if somebody enters in and be like, I shoot that sister first. I can't stand her. Right? And be like, what? We got to be in one mind and one accord. There's power in agreement. Amen? There's favor and answered prayer when we're together. The Word of God says in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 19, it says, And again I say unto you that if, if two shall agree on the earth as touching anything it sh that they ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. If two agree. So if two agree on anything, it shall be done. So there's favor and there's answered prayer when you stand in agreement with somebody, when you get in one accord with somebody, that's just two. Can you imagine what you can call down? Can you imagine what can be poured down? Can you imagine the prayers that can be answered if you truly set yourself aside? When we, when we pray on Wednesday and it says during um, individual prayer, the secret prize, don't interrupt them. It doesn't matter if they're at the altar, don't interrupt them. It doesn't matter if they're at their seat, don't, don't lay hands on them, don't interrupt them. They're in two with Jesus. And then when, when uh, 8 15 comes, it's corporate prayer time. What would happen, church, if you went to your sister and said, What can we pray? What can, what can, the, can the two of us agree upon? Brother, what can the two of us agree upon so that we can call it down, so that it can be so? Because according to his word, he says, if we agree upon anything, it shall be done. What do you need me to agree with you on? Not coming passive and then like, nobody's, nobody needs corporate prayer. Yeah. No, no, no. There is purpose. There is purpose. There is power in prayer. There is power in agreement. There is power in unity. There is power in being a one accord. But church, you've got to be intentional about that. Corporate prayer. He says, if they, if, they, if they agree upon anything on this earth, touching anything that they ask, it shall be done. Amen? God's presence, here's, here's one for you. God's presence is drawn when we're together. Because the next verse says, in, in verse 20 it says, For where there are two or more gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Now God is not a liar. He's not a man that he should lie, Amen. Right? So if he says, where well, there's two or more gathered in my name, there I am. Is he here? Yes. Amen. Amen. He's here. So the, if you're by yourself, yes, the Lord can visit you. He can have a visitation with you. He can inhabit you. You can have that one-on-one -on -one time. But in an instant when you include another person, in an instant that, that principle comes into effect, he has to come. He has to come. He said, if, you, if two or more are gathered, he has to come. Church, we need to gather. We need to get together. We need, not in the same vicinity, but of same mind, one mind and one accord. We need to get together. When we pray, pray as one. Seek the Lord as one. As the body. God's presence is drawn when we're in accord. When we're together. When we're in unity. Go to Acts chapter 2, if you're not there already. There's revival when we gather together as one. There's revival when we gather together in one accord. I'm going to read verse 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, and they were all with one accord in one place, then suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And it appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. If you need the Holy Ghost this morning, He's here. All of them were filled. That is a promise. I don't care. There's a lot of, uh, of um, theology going around saying that 
that you don't need the Holy Ghost, and that's not the, that, that is the evidence of the Holy Ghost. And one, and one of these days, I'm going to teach right here that there's a difference between evidence and there's a difference between fruit. There's a difference between the evidence of the Holy Ghost, the initial baptism of the Holy Ghost, and the fruit of the Spirit. Because the fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, and, you know, I, I can go through all of them, but how many of the people, there's some people that, that show, can show love, but don't have the, that don't have the Spirit of God? They can show peace. They can have peace, but they don't have the Spirit of God. They can show joy and have joy, but they don't have the Spirit of God. So those aren't the evidence. That's a fruit. Anyway, um, that's, that one's for free. And it appeared unto them. So there's, uh, oh, I, okay, Lord. There are some big names out there that, that, that are making simple, simple decorations. I'm sorry, I respect them, I love them, but I disagree. Because the Word of God says something that can't be shaken. The, it, it, the, the, they'll get a revelation. I, I'm just going to declare it. They'll get a revelation one time or another what, what Scripture really says about the, 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 the Holy Ghost. About the initial infilling of the Holy Ghost. About being filled with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Everyone can and should speak in tongues. Everyone. That is your evidence. And if you don't have the evidence, you can have it this morning. Right here, right now. Amen. But they were all filled. The sun came sound from heaven rushing as a mighty wind and it filled the house where they were sitting and it appeared in them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. All filled. Now look at verse 5. And there was dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And remember I told you the Lord told me to ask for the nations. He said get in one accord. Get in one accord with the body. And asked me for the nations. Because these people were in one accord. And all of a sudden the power of God fell. And verse 5 says that they were dwelling in Jerusalem. Devout men of every nation under heaven. Now when it was noised abroad. The multitude came together. And they were confounded. Because every man heard them speak in their own language. Amen. Go to verse 14. I want to show you about being in one accord. Now Peter is attributed to, to preaching the first message on the day of Pentecost. Right? But Peter wasn't alone. I want you to show in verse 14 it says, But Peter standing up with the eleven. So Peter's preaching, but he's not alone. He's got some backup. He's got brothers right here, right beside him. All eleven. It said, Peter standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto the men, Ye men of Judea and all that dwell in the land of Jerusalem, be it known unto you and hearken unto my words. So Peter's preaching, but he's not standing there behind the pulpit by himself. That's like when we go out to minister. Church, it's not just me preaching. It's not just me praying. It's not me just laying hands. It's not me just casting out devils. It's the entire body. It ain't about me. Amen. And it wasn't all about Peter. They all stood with them. The scripture says specifically, but Peter standing up with the eleven. They, it specifically says that to show one again, once again the power of unity and being in one accord. Amen. Go to verse 41. Go to verse 41. And as, as Peter's preaching, it says, Then they gladly received the word. Hold on, I'm going to back up. Let's go to verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of all your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. What do you say? You shall. Right? Why? For this is a promise. It's unto you and all your children and all to that are far off as many as the Lord shall call. With many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. You need to repent. You need to be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sins. And you need to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I don't care if your favorite preacher says otherwise. That's the word. Verse 41. 41 then they gladly received his word and were baptized. And that same day, check this out, the revival happens when you're in one accord. And that same day, were added a, unto them 3,000 souls. That same day. 
Because they were in one accord. Because they walked in obedience when the Lord said, go and wait. Be so focused in one accord. Go and wait in one accord. And be so focused on my coming, on that promise coming, and await that coming, that power falling, and, and, and until you're endued with power from on high. Wait for that to happen. When that happens, because you're in one accord, revival's going to happen. And about 3,000 souls were added into that day, about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. And the breaking of bread and in prayers. One of these days I'm going to preach to you on the Apostles' Doctrine. Make no mistake about it. This is an apostolic church. This is a Pentecostal church. Why? Because we're filled with the Spirit. It's apostolic. I'll go into detail on another time. We believe in baptism. Right? There's so many people hung up on, on uh, their denomination, but they really don't know what apostolic means. They really don't know what Pentecostal means. They're saying that they're Pentecostal, but they're never in one accord with the body. What do you mean you're Pentecostal? That, that means you were in one accord when the Spirit fell. You're never in one accord. You're always doing your own thing. The shoe fits weird online. I'm just saying. I'm not pulling any punches. One of the things the Lord said, he goes, son, I know you're bold. And, you know, a little bit of when it comes to delivery. He said, but be bold as a lion. Don't worry about hurting people's feelings. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deliver in love. Don't, don't, make, don't make no mistake about it. But I'm not going to hold back because I'm afraid you get offended. I want you to be saved. I want you to be filled. I want you to be delivered. I want you to have everything the Lord has for you to, to have, to be in one accord and to fire to fall, the anointing to fall, the, po the power of God to fall in your life. And if I will hold, withhold anything because I'm, oh, uh, what if I offend brother and sister so-and-so? Get offended. I'm going to offend you right into heaven. Amen. Amen. Right? I ain't got my PhD in theology yet, but I can still do some surgery. Right? Cut off some mess. All the thickness, all the bad, you know. Some of us have some cancer attached to us that need to be cut off. And some of that boldness of preaching, some of that foolishness of preaching, some of that, why does pastor preach that way? I don't know either. You know, it just comes out. But because he's called me to do that, some people are getting surgery this morning. Some people in here, some people online, some people that thought they were in one accord really found out that they've never really been. Or that they were, but they lost it. They exited on, off an off ramp. They, they went here and they went there. And God's saying, get back in alignment. Get back in unity. Get back in one accord with the body as Him being the head. Yes. Amen. And it says right here that they, they continued in the apostles' doctrine, uh, fellowship, and breaking in bread and in prayers. There it is again. Hey, if you're, not, if you're not getting together, eating together, fellowshipping together, praying together. Come on, church, you've got to gather together. Go out to eat together. Go love on one another some more. It ain't about just meeting at church and I won't see you till next Sunday. Or when we have a Bible study. This is the body of Christ. Amen. We should know each other. We should love on each other. This is a family. Activate church. It's not just a church. It's activate family. Amen. Verse 43. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs. You know what happens when you're in, you're in one accord? Wonders and signs that were done by who? Not just by Peter, but by the apostles. And all that believed were together. Uh-oh, together. Uh, one accord. Come on, church. Read, read it. Read it. Hear it. See it. All that believed were together. And all things common. They were together in one accord. And watch this. They sold their possessions and goods and parted them out to all men. Uh-oh. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you to go sell everything you have. But what that scripture is saying is they made sure that everybody had what they needed. They were there. You, you need something? Do you need something? What do you need? It's not just prayer. You need me to help you? You need me to... 
They were there for one another. It wasn't just about what I have and you have that and I, you know, whatever you need. I'm here for you. If I can give it, if I can pray for you, if I can lay hands off, if I can cast out devils, if I can go help you lay carpet, whatever. I'm here for you. Don't call me, brother. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm joking. But you know what I'm saying? The, the scriptures say that, that they, they, uh, they sold the possessions they're good and parted out to all men as every man had need. Are you, are you really there for, are you there to serve? What do you need, brother? Brother Saul, what do you need? What can I do for you? How can I serve you? How can I help you? Most people are like, no, I'm good. And then go home like, man, I wish they would pray for me. I wish somebody would just, you know how, you know how, many, how much time I've, I've been at home and said, Lord, I have no friends. I'm alone. I, I, I got my wife. She's my best friend. But sometimes I need to go out, out and hang with some guys. There's too much femininity. Anyway, I'm just joking. I love our time together. But you know what I'm talking about? What do you need? Is your heart that much? Is your heart, is your heart out there for what the body needs? How, how can I... How can I help? How can I serve? What do you need from me? We should be in competition to see who, out could, who can outserve one another. You want to have a beautiful marriage? Outserve one another. Outserve one another. Will you give me a glass of water? Sure. I'll get you a glass of water. Here's a little quequito too, you know. <laughs> you want a sandwich? You want a sandwich too? Not, ugh. Go get it yourself. You know. Outserve one another. Amen. You know, every once in a while, it could get on your nerves, but you should remember this: outserve one another. If we're outserving one another, we'll be in one accord. There will be no competition. There will be no envy. There will be no strife. There will be no frustration because we're out trying to serve one another. Let me help you get to where you're going. Let me help you get, get to this place. Let me help you get off the floor. Oh, you're broken. Let me, help, let me help put you back together. Let me pray for you. Let me lift you up. Let me strengthen you. That's what it should be. That's what the body of Christ should be. That's what the church should be. Not going, ooh, sister so and is going through something. Oh, pobrecita, look at her. She's on the floor. Uh, she's all broken. And, oh, well. Go pick her up. Go pick him up. Go lift that brother up. Some of you may never know it, but I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. I see, I see you broken. I see you struggling. I see you frustrated. And I'm praying for you. I'm trying to fight every devil in hell off of you. And you don't know it. And I pray, I pray. I know, I know y'all are praying for me because I feel it sometimes. I feel it when the enemy hits me and I'm like, I'm exhausted and all of a sudden it feels like you know, all my backup starts coming over the mountains. And I just see y'all in the spear like that all running with swords. Ah! Right? I see Brother Adrian like, ah! I, I see Brother Orlando just like hugging 10 demons. You know, just like, get him! I'm like, I'm tired. Right? For some reason, I see... Uh, Avery, like a big old Care Bear, just a big old heart, just bing, you know. <laughs> All these devils die from just love. <laughs> and I just got a vision of Brother Logan barbecuing the devil. I don't know. <laughs> Smoke. He's all smoking him. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, my mind just... And they continued daily in one accord. Come on, church. Verse 46. And they continued daily. Daily. Let me say that again. Say it with me. Daily. They continued daily with one accord in the temple. In the church. Uh oh Got to come to church every day. <laughs> one Sunday is good enough. What happens when we go to two services? What happens when we go to three services? What happens when, 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 when we go from Wednesday prayer and Thursday night women's Bible study and Friday night men's group and Saturday morning men's breakfast? and oh, That's too much church. I need a break. We've got to be in one accord. 
Whatever the Lord wants, amen. amen. Whatever the Lord wants, amen. amen. Continuing daily in one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. Let's go to, I'm going to go visit you next week, Brother Adrian. And then after that, I'm, I'm just going to go down the road. What are we eating today? The Bible said, going from house to house, they did eat meat with gladness and singleness of heart. It said meat. Okay, so don't get, I'm not into vegetarian meals. <laughs> Obviously, right, meat. I want steak, hamburger. I'm going from house to house. I got scripture for it now. Y'all are in trouble. You know what? Somebody's going to show up at my house. House to house. What are we eating? <laughs> I'll be in my house shoes and socks like, come in. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. But I want you to see, see uh, one accord again. It said, they did eat, ha eat meat with gladness in singleness of heart. Again, it's talking about having the singleness of heart. They had one heart. They had one heart. It's not what I want. It's not what you want. It's not what sister so-and-so wants. They all had one heart. They were in one accord. This entire time, through all this soul winning, through all these miracle signs and wonders, they had one heart, one mind. And you look upon Scripture that confirms that the power of God falls when we're together. That the favor of God falls when we're together. That the fire of God, the Holy Ghost, falls when we're together. Amen. And it said, praising God and having favor with all people. How many want to have favor? Stay in one accord. And the Lord added unto the church daily such as should be saved. We should be adding to the church daily. And if we're in one accord, and our purpose is in one accord, church, we'll add to the church daily. It won't be every once in a while. It won't be... You know, some of us feel so good when we're able to witness or pray for somebody and testify. And it feels good and I'm happy for you. But that it, feels, it feels like an amazing day because it doesn't happen all the time. Some, some of us are, 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 are getting um, a high because it happens once every six months. That should happen daily. Spreading the gospel daily. Giving your testimony day. If you don't know what to say, just, just tell somebody what God has done in your life. Did you know that, that you could help break somebody else's stronghold because you gave your testimony? Amen. What is your testimony? If I asked you this morning and put the mic around, what has God done for you? Give me your testimony. What will break a chain off of somebody? Tell me your testimony. What were you going to say? Give your testimony, church. You see somebody broken. Let me tell you what God's done in my life. And this may not land with you. This may not fit with you. But I'm going to tell you right now. This is what God did for me. He delivered me from this and this and this and this. And they're like, you just confessed that to a complete stranger. He delivered you from all that? Yeah, I did. And you may be hiding some things. And I'm not accusing you. But he can deliver you from anything. Anything. He can free you from anything. He can fill you with his spirit from anything. You can be the worst of the worst of the worst of the worst out there doing the most dirt and still be saved. Amen. Amen. You could have given up on the entire world getting ready to go jump in front of a car and him go, no, not today, son. I'm calling you because I care for you that much. You could be losing your wife and he'll say, I love you. I want a relationship with you. God loves you that much, church. But we got to be praising and having favor and winning souls all in one mind, all in one accord, all in one heart, all in one purpose. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. Amen. Church, I believe the Lord is calling us to, to be in one accord this morning, to, to reevaluate our definition of being in one accord to gathering together and making sure that we all have the same vision, what we're doing the same thing. We're trying to make win souls. We're trying to win this city. We're trying to, and, and ask for the nations to be bold 
and to outserve one another to be in one accord, church. Let nothing, church, nothing, nothing, nothing. Let me state this, please, everybody. Look at me in my, in my pretty eyes. Let nothing break your unity. Let no offense, no person, no position, no recognition, no jealousy, no envy, no gossip. Let nothing break unity. And when the enemy tries to come in and cause division and you see it, I don't care who it's on, you need to tell them, I'm not breaking unity. I'm not breaking being in one accord. You need to stop talking like that. You need to stop acting like that. You need to stop walking like that. Encourage them. You don't have to be that. Come on. You, sh you know you shouldn't be that way. Don't talk that way. Don't gossip. Don't be jealous. Don't be envious. God wants to bless you too. But right now it's their turn. Can you celebrate somebody else? You'll celebrate somebody else when you're serving them. Right? When you're, help, when you're trying to help somebody else accomplish something, when they get it, you ain't jealous. Why? Because you're helping them get there. We got to be with one mind and one accord. Church, I'm going to say it one more time. Do not let the enemy come in and break up our unity. Ever. Be in one mind and one accord. Come on, let's stand. Father, we come before you this morning, Lord Jesus. And if there was any point, Lord God, where we lost our focus on being in one accord, truly in one accord, not just in the vicinity, not just in the, in the house, not just in the building, Father, but being in one mind and, and singleness of heart, in one accord, unanimously, unanimously seeking your face. Father God, we ask you, Lord God, to forgive us. Forgive us for being selfish. Forgive us, Lord God, for doing our own will and not your own. Forgive us for not seeking your kingdom and seeking our own. Forgive us, Lord God, for being caught up in our own things, Lord God, and not who we can serve and who we can love and who we can magnify you to. Lord Jesus, help us to stay in one accord, Lord God. And I plead your blood against all strife. I plead your blood against all division. I plead your blood against every chain of offense. Every chain of bitterness, every chain of unforgiveness, Father God, break every chain this morning. Lord God, I pray for restoration. Restoration, Lord. And there's many people that won't allow themselves, Lord God, to draw near to you because they've been hurt by the body, by people that claim to be your children. Father, I ask, Lord, 